Hello there and welcome to another casual evaluation. This time it's floor and decor, a company suggested by one of the subscribers. Vlad, thank you for that. And I hope that this video answers your questions. If not, of course, you can reach out via the comment section below. Now, from a share price point of view, it's a company that performed exceptionally well, up almost 200% in the last five years, definitely beating the S&P 500. Currently market cap of just under 10 billion. Of course, before diving into the company's financials, Let's take a look at what the company does. If I have to describe it in one sentence, then it would be on the right side. It's a distributor of hard surface flooring and related accessories that they're selling through their warehouse format stores. And in the annual report, they provide split of the hard surface flooring, basically the revenue that they get from each type. I don't find a lot of value in this split and I don't see a lot of, uh, of value to analyze it per type of product. Therefore, my analysis starts from the total level, looking into the historical financial performance. And the first thing that we can notice that the revenue increase is there year over year and it's crushing, right? Um, 2015, around 700 million, now three and a half billion, huge, huge increase. And of course, we will take a look at the reasons behind this growth. Um, up until 2021, it was roughly 25% average annual growth. Then we have much higher growth in 2021, 42%. But part of that is due to the increases of the prices of the product, which of course we cannot expect every single year. Now, normally in a lot of companies, we do see one year being abnormal due to the pandemic, whether it's a positive or negative. Here we don't really see that. It seems like a fairly flat or fa fairly stable growth increase. Uh, and we can argue that on one side, we had some people who were working from home with uh, limited options on what to do after work because of the lockdown. So they chose to visit floor and decor, buy some materials and renovate on their own. But also on the other side, there are people who had a tough time during the pandemic that they didn't have enough money. So even though maybe they had plans to renovate, they had to postpone that. I think these two groups had uh, impact that was canceling each other out. So. I'm not surprised that there is not really a huge impact uh, for coming from the pandemic. Now, the next topic that's very important to understand is the operating margin. And it seems very low. Uh, it's currently at 10%. It did increase, but still 10%. It seems low, but it's not surprising. And here's why. What they need to cover with the revenues, first, the cost of sales. That is the products, the, uh, basically the cost of the products that they're selling. And it's, it did decrease a little bit, but it's actually quite stable now at around 58, 59% of the revenue. And from this chart, you can basically calculate the margin that they're adding on top. But can they, can they reduce this further? I don't think so. So from, from cost of sales, I think it will remain more or less the same over time, right? Now, the next two categories are the ones that I think over time they should be able to reduce as a percentage of revenue and therefore increase the operating margin my guess, my estimate, 13%. And here's my rationale for it. If the company has 160 stores, which is how many it has now, and it grows to, to 500, which is what they expect in eight to 10 years, their efforts for running a marketing campaign would not double. Their expenditure would not double or triple. It would increase, but it would not increase as much as the revenue. So as a percentage of sales, I expect that the marketing costs decrease and probably also the general administrative. The store operating, I think that will remain pretty much flat unless they introduce some huge automation, but I'm quite sure that there's a lot of automation already in place. So I'm, my, my forecast basically involves decreasing of marketing expenses as percentage of revenue and the general and administrative. So how does floor and decor grow? And we can ask the same question and this answer would, would basically answer this question for all retail companies. The first one is increase of location. That's, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And we can see that one of the reasons why the revenue grew so much was because they had opened a lot of stores. Now, of course, the fact that um, the operating margin increased also means that these new stores were, were profitable. It's not that they were just opening new stores to boost the revenue, but they made a good good decision on, on the locations of these stores. So we have increase of, of uh, these warehouse format stores. 
The second thing that they can do is sell more through existing locations. Part of the increase is due to that. So they have increased uh, locations. We saw increased prices in 2021. We can't really uh, incorporate that in the forecast. We can't really count, count on that. And the last part is change in consumer taste. And this is an interesting one because they are currently only focused on hard surface flooring. And this is what they provide in the annual report. If you take a look at the percentage, the consumer taste changed from soft surface, it, it declined in the last five years, to hard surface. So there was a lot, of, uh, the, the, cost, the average consumer basically preferred hard surface over soft surface. And if this remains the same, or if the trend uh, moves into the same direction as it was in the last five years, then floor and decor would benefit from it. But if there's a reversal, then they're going to be losing customers because they're again focused on this part. So although I don't look at the revenue per type of product, this is one category that summarizes well their, their product offerings. So we need to keep this in mind because if I go back, basically these are the factors that can impact how the revenue moves over time. And of course, if they increase locations, the revenue will go up. If they decrease, it would have the opposite impact. Same goes with the changing consumer taste. It really depends in which way it, um, it, it moves over time. Now, assuming that it remains the same, then uh, we are not going to make any additional revenue growth based on the changing consumer taste. Now, one thing that's important is um, if we take a look at the assets, we know that this is a capital intensive business and uh, a lot of capital is tied in inventory. 2021, at the end, in December, a billion in inventory. And it's, it's not a surprise. I mean, every time that they open a, a new store, they need to fill it with inventory. And it's, it, that's not free. Even if they rent the location, even if they don't buy it, they still need to get the inventory. And if we divide this by 160, which is the number of stores at the end of 2021, that's roughly 6 million. It's a bit above 6 million, but let's round it to $6 million a store. So if they... If, if they're aiming to have 500 stores, well, we need to take into account that for each additional one, they'll have to invest roughly 6 million or even more in inventory. Now, the, the second point I'd like to make is, is regarding Goodwill. They only have one acquisition in, in the last five years, not really a large one, 77, 78 million. So it's not a material one. That means that they, they're open to growing through acquisition, but based on the last five years, it's not something that they're doing that often. Now, on the liabilities and equity side, of course, um, one of the things is um, always the debt. It's something that's always being discussed. How high it is. In the case of Florent Decor, that's not really a, a threat to, to the company's liquidity. Um, but they do have, of course, a lot of capital leases, and that doesn't come as a surprise. Basically, the new locations that they have uh, are leased, so they're not going to buy all of these places and it, it makes sense if they want to grow fast they can't afford to 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 buy them they have to they have to lease them so looking into the future what can we expect so we have a company that grew at about 25 percent then we have a 40 percent growth in one year that's um abnormal increase and the analysts are forecasting between 25 and 29 percent growth for the next year and then you see 20 percent in the year after now if I take a look at their plans for uh, increasing the locations, I think that's a bit of a more relevant uh, estimator of the revenue rather than, than these percentages that come from the analysts. Although they, they come in ranges, so it's between the low and the high, there is quite, quite a significant difference. If we take a look at just two years from now, 2023, the low estimate is 4.8 billion, the high one is 5 point. So there's a huge, huge a difference in, in the expectations and only two years from now. The second part is worth mentioning is the increase in operating margin. This doesn't come to us to, as a surprise to me. I'm, this is something that uh, I covered before. I think that they should manage to, to increase the margin as they grow. So these are my assumptions. 26% growth in revenue next year and then 22%. This is again based on number of locations that they expect to open in the coming period. So it's a bit higher than the analyst expectations, but then as they grow, as they grow bigger, that's when I reduce the growth because I think when they are bigger, it will be more difficult for them to grow. Operating margin growing to 13%, that, that's something that I also mentioned. 
tax rate eventually to 25%. And because they had high beta, the weighted average cost of capital is almost 12%. So it's currently perceived as a company that's fairly risky um, on the market. So this is how the, the intrinsic valuation model looks like, at least from the numbers point of view. Revenue increasing from 3.4 billion to 15.3 billion. So it's a huge increase, but growing from 160 to 500 stores in the next eight to 10 years, not surprising to have this, this huge increase. That's 346% in the next 10 years. Now, if you take a look at the additional reinvestment, some of these numbers, uh, if you try to compare it with, with a tra traditional metrics, yeah, it would seem too high. But in here, I'm also including the capital that will be tied to inventory because they'll need to, to, to pay that. They'll need to invest that. And certain amount, as we mentioned, six, uh, six million per store, that will, it will be tied. It will be cash outflow that we are not getting back right now. It's just something that will be used for the operations, but it is kind of an investment. So we need to adjust the free cash flow for that. So part of the additional reinvestment is, of course, once they lease a new store, they need to equip it. They need to buy certain equipments, but part is also the inventory. Um, so this is how at least the free cash flow looks like. I expect it to, to have positive free cash flows in, in a couple of years. Putting all the numbers together, Terminal value or the value of the company 10 years from now when they have the 500 stores, about 21.3 billion. Present value, because we're discounting with relatively high weighted average cost of capital, just under 8 billion. Plus the present value of the cash flows that they'll be generating in the next 10 years, 1.5 billion. That brings it uh, the total value of, of the stores of the business and not only the ones that they have, but the ones that I expect to open to nine and, a half, nine and a half billion. They have a little bit of cash, not a lot, but they have a lot of debt, that's the capital leases, and the value of equity options. That brings the value of equity to about eight billion. And we know at the beginning of, the, of this presentation, basically that the, the market cap was just under 10 billion. That's 20% roughly higher than, than my calculation of the value of equity. But again, it's based on my assumptions. Dividing that with the number of shares, some 106 million, value per share is $75, $76 a share. Now, if you assume that the company grows faster, then you will have, of course, you'll, you'll arrive to different fair value per share. My assumption was 346% in 10 years and 13% margin. There, therefore, I got to the 75.5. If you expect the company to grow much faster and to improve the margin, more, then you know it might be a company that's that's worth um, taking a, a look at and maybe buying, based on different fundamentals, uh, different assumptions. But based on based on my scenario, it looks that it's a little bit expensive at this price. Um, and I think this is a this is an interesting example, not because the company is very complex to understand. I mean, all the the way they they'll grow is they'll open new stores, they'll have a lot of inventory in it. And as long as they can maintain the margin, and improve it, they'll make money. So from a, from a business point of view, it's a, it's a great business model and it's, it's proven in 160 locations that it works. And you can replicate this to any retail store. So every time that you see a retail company, how do they grow? Kind of the similar way. Um, that would be my take on floor and decor. Um, at least I'll try to, um, keep covering other companies that come from the suggestions. One of the topics that I like to mention is the market has been irrational during the pandemic. And that's what we can see is at the very first slide, the share price went down. And this is not really rational. Why a company like Florin Decor would lose value? Why would they sell less? Um, and we saw that that wasn't the case, but th this was an irrational market movement because of the panic and uncertainty that was there. Um, there was a, a huge decline. So this would have been an, a great opportunity to invest in floor and decor. And of course, probably this 150 was an, also an irrational hype around the company. But th this dip here, it seems as as an irrational based on based on my rationale at this moment, looking in hindsight. So. If something like this happens again, I mean, I hope not 
because of a pandemic. But you know, if there is a huge decrease uh, of the share price and the fundamentals remain the same, and what I mean by that is improvement on the margin, increase in location, increase of revenue, and it kind of follows my forecast of the revenue. I'll also be interested in, in making a in creating a, opening a position of this company but at this moment not at at this price uh, but again if you have different assumptions if you're more bullish on the company if you're if you're expecting it to grow faster than me could be taking a look into it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one